A staff is staff hook test in Bob Metzias. We learn from Achenu Kol Beis Yisrael and Asumah Sarva Shivya. We'll start from the last line on on yesterday's staff hook test and base. My Abedomim Reb Tafar Mishtamish. What was the Mishnah talking about? Anything that we're talking about basically about animals. The animals can earn their keep, so you should support them. Meaning, feed the animals, take care of them, and let them do what they do, whether it's plowing or or laying eggs or whatever it is, if they can earn their keep, if they cannot earn their keep, rather than you invest in them and then have to take that money back from the finder, if and when you find him, if when you find the, the, uh, the I mean, the, the loser rather, the one who lost the item, when you find the, the person who lost the item, you're gonna have to, you're gonna show him your list of expenses. So if he's gonna have a big loss, it doesn't pay, turn it into money, turn the, sell the animal, turn it into money. Now, when you turn it into money, what do you do with the money? So that was a machlokus we had in the Mishnah. Reb Tarfin said, you may use the money. Therefore, you're, you're effectively borrowing the money. And therefore, you're responsible for any loss that happens, even if it's an accident. Reb Akiva says, no, you shouldn't use the money. And therefore, if it's lost, you're not hired. You're not responsible for it. So that's what we're going to be dealing with now. But the machlokus between Reb Tarfin and Reb Akiva. Tarfin says, you may use the money, and therefore, you're responsible Rabbi Kiva says, you may not use the money, and therefore you're not responsible. But what responsibility are we talking about? Says the Gemara, the last few words on the page, till the machlok is only election ishtamish behem, if you're entitled to use it. It doesn't really mean, Rashi doesn't learn that it means if you actually used it. It means that you're allowed to use it. Rashi says, because you're entitled to use it, therefore, therefore, Rabbi Tarfin says, you're like, Borrowing the item and therefore you're responsible to pay. Avalon is shamash ben, but if you're not entitled to use it, then in Mavdot's mashba, you'd be potter, right? That's the machlokas here. The machlokas is only are you entitled to use it? You're chayib as a shoel. Are you not entitled to use it? You wouldn't be chayib if it was lost. That means you're not chayib if it's lost, even for loss. This is a kashan of Yosef. Why did my famous machlokas buy the item itself? Here we're talking about the money that you converted the lost item to. You found this item. You, you 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 didn't want to you couldn't take care of it any longer or it was just too long in 12 months or or as we'll see it was just it was uh, it, it was going to cause a loss you were going to invest more in the animal than the animal could produce it wasn't earning its keep so you sold and converted to money what do you do with the money okay so we were talking about can you use the money or not that's machlokus from Tafar Mekiva but the, the Gemara says the machlokus is only if you entitled to use it would you be chayev but if you're not entitled to use it you just have to watch it like you watch the item itself, just keep it. You're not chayyab for a bait. It's mashma machlokes only if you're entitled to use it. How far does your responsibility go? Or are you entitled to use it? Tarf says you're entitled to use it. Kim says you're not entitled to use it. Mashma, if you're not entitled to use it, if it's lost, you'd be potter. That's a kashner of Yosef. Ditmar, on the item itself, shomer abeda, when you're responsible, when you're watching an item, an item that you found, you found the item, you're responsible to return it, right? We have three, we have three averis you could have over here stealing it. If you shouldn't have taken it, you took it too early, or you shouldn't, or you didn't return it at all. Or if you walked away from it, you were mitalem, you didn't look, you didn't, you didn't say, I don't want to bother with it, I'm not going to deal with it. If you're capable of dealing with it, you should. That's another Avera, and Hashem, you have to return it. Okay, so here, while you're holding on to it in an attempt to return it, you either, you said, uh, Michael, you said yesterday, you know, you first try to tell your neighbors, right? When there was no, even when there was a base of Migdash, you first, Maybe maybe one of you guys lost. Did you find something out here? Obviously, but if you can't, so you take it to the lost and found in the base of Mikdash. Fine. <clears throat> While you're holding on to it, what is your status? Are you a shomer chinam or you shomer sacher? Did my shomer veda? We're talking about here about the item itself. Rabba mekusham chinam. You're a shomer chinam. You're only responsible for negligence. You're a shomer sacher. Why? Because you're paid. How are you paid? Because you don't have to do other mitzvahs. Because you're osik mitzvah potem and a mitzvah. And therefore, you don't, you're saving, you don't have to deal with uh, giving stock or whatever it is, and therefore, you're effectively paid. Therefore, you're chayv on Gineva and Aveda. So, Rabbi Yosef says, even on the item itself, you're chayv on Gineva and Aveda. Certainly on the money that you converted it into. So, it's the kasha, kasha on Rabbi Yosef, because it's mashma over here, that everybody would agree that if you're not entitled to use it, you're potter on Aveda. Again, it doesn't mean literally to use it. But Tarfin says, you're entitled to use it. So, effectively, you've been lent this item. Michael, your question yesterday is asked by Tosis. Why isn't this like a loan? It's really, it is really a loan. It's the same thing. It's really the same thing because whether it's a loan, whether it's a loan of money or a loan of an item, the difference is the loan of an item, normally you're not entitled to, you have to return that item. You're not entitled to, you know, sell it and convert it to money. 
a loan of money. Obviously, you're meant to spend the money, but either way, you're totally responsible. So it says it really doesn't make any difference. Could have said it, so it's like a loan, but it's the same thing, really. It doesn't really make any difference. He just says, because it's shawl, because we're talking about onsen and chayv and onsen, but the truth is that a loan will be the same thing. Yeah, but over here, here it's impossible. Right, but over here, over here, we're doing the best that we can under the circumstances. This man is, you found the item, you found the item, but, but right, 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 that's right. So, correct, but the rabbis, because over here, since you did it, you're doing a mitzvah. You picked up the item, you didn't walk away, you fulfilled the mitzvah, you picked it up, you guarded it for X amount of time or whatever until you couldn't, you had to convert benefit and say, you know what? In this case, you can even use the item for interim tarpon. Because, because you made this great effort, you're doing a mitzvah, then you went, went to all this tircha, therefore you're allowed to. If you find, as we're going to see tomorrow, if you find a wallet full of cash, we mentioned this already, and there's a, you have the wallet has a simon on it, if you find cash, normally you can keep it because you can assume the guy gave up, right, that he was miyayish. But if you find a, a wallet with cash, you can't use that money because it's your, your shomer, your shomer, your veder, your shomer, you're either a shomer sacher or a shomer chinam, but you're a shomer. But here the rabbis gave you a special dispensation because you're a good guy, you took care of it, you converted money, did the right thing, we're going to allow you to use the money. Obviously, you'd be responsible for it if anything happened to it. So the point over here, though, is that it's mashra from here that the machlokas is only you're allowed to use it or you're not allowed to use it. Uh, but if you wouldn't be allowed to use it, everybody would be moda, that you'd be potter on aveda. Imav, you'd be potter. But here Rabbi Yosef says, even on the item itself, you're a shomer socher, you're chayiv on geneiv and aveda. And Rabbi Yosef says, shomer socher. Amal Rabbi Yosef, so Rabbi Yosef will tell you, no, but geneiv and aveda, kolayamal apli to chayiv. The truth is, everybody agrees that you're a tarfan who, I mean, Rabbi Yosef, Goes, even Reb Tarfin will go like Reb Yosef, who says, no, you are a Shomer Sacher, whether it's the item, and certainly for the money that you convert it to, you release the Shomer Sacher. Everybody agrees with that. Keep leaving the own. So the question is, are you allowed to use the money and therefore you'd be high up even for accidents? The right, uh, the owns the show up, because the show is, is responsible. It's you know, a guard and a person who borrowed something. If I borrowed your uh, your lawnmower, your barbecue, or your saw, a saw or whatever, I'm responsible for accidents. The rabbis allowed you to use it. Why? Because you made a great effort. Therefore, you're allowed to use your shawl, and therefore you're responsible for accidents. They didn't allow you to use it. They didn't allow you to use it, but you're still a Shomer Sacher. That's what Tarfim will explain. That's what Yosef will explain, even in Rabbi Kiva. In other words, the Machlokas is not that Rabbi Tarfim says, you're Chayvan Onsen, sure, that he says that clearly. But the Rebbe Merkiva says, no, you're not allowed to use it. You're not chayv and It doesn't mean that you're put on grave and aveda. You're still like a shomer sacha. That's how Rabbi that's how Rabbi Yosef will learn over here. But Rabbi Kiva says, lo shomer b'al shemishim bayu hilkach lo avashal. You're not allowed to use it. Therefore, you're not a show. Well, you're not a bar. You're not you're not responsible for him. Uh, uh, but you're still responsible for grave and aveda. So if that's the case, what's this whole business about lepicha? Rabbi Kiva says, lo yishtamish b'em lepicha imav the way in chayv and Therefore, if you lost it, you're not entitled. Well, it's obvious. If the machlokus is even on Gnei Aveda, that again, Rabbi Tarfa would say, you're Shoal Yachayv even on Onsen. And Rabbi Kiva says, no, you can't touch it, and you're even put on Gnei Aveda. So Heinrich Tanner Rabbi Kiva, I'm a Lord Mishtamish man, you shouldn't use it all. Since you're not entitled to use it, therefore you're not a Shoal, and, and, and therefore it's lost. You're also not Chayv Achri Yasin because you didn't touch it. You're only a Shoal Merchinam. Pardon? Correct, except for the mitzvah, correct. Not motivated to a lot of stuff, you know. I might think, again, Rabbi Kiva's arguing like this. If you say that Rabbi Kiva says your potter even going to even aveda when when you're not entitled to use the money as a shomer sacher, as, as a shomer, you're simply a shomer chinam. I might think shomer sacher, I might think you're a shomer sacher, correct, Rabbi Yosef. Kamash Mulan, Rabbi Kiva is telling me, no, not like Rabbi Yosef, that you're not even, you're not even a Shomer Sacher. Kamash Mulan, you're not, you're only a Shomer Chinam. So if you don't use it, you're not entitled to use it, you're certainly not a Shoah, you're not even a Shomer Sacher. The Ficha, Hashda, the Amr, Lo Yishtamash Ben, since we say you shouldn't use it, therefore Shomer Sacher, you're not, you're not that. You might think you're a Shomer Sacher like Rabbi Yosef says. Kamash Mulan, no, you're not. Belo Machayv Ganei Ben Aveda. Eliyam Ganei Ben Aveda, Koyam Lopli Dechayv. But if you say everybody holds Yechayv Ganei Ben Aveda, like Rabbi Yosef says, so keep pleading, the only machlok is by onsen. Are you a shoal or not? Onsen shoals. So my little favorite was Rabbi Kiva telling me. How come my little message should say this? Rabbi Kiva, I'm a lawyer. Stamish man. What did Rabbi Tarfin said? What do you do with the money? 
Maya Bidam said the Mishnah. Tarfin says you can even use the money. If you use the money, then you're responsible. Or Bikiva should say, no, you can't use the money. If you can't use the money, obviously you're not responsible. Ana Yadan, I'll say this as the more. And since you can't use it, so what? It's a little bit verbose here. It's more like it. It's like not not like regular Gemara. It's more like a it's like a later addition. So what does Rabbi Kiva tell him for? What's that whole business? The last few words of the Mishnah. Obviously, since you can't use the money, if you're not entitled to use it, you're not a showel. So you're simply a shomer chinam. So therefore, it must be maybe that Rabbi Kiva really is saying. That you are only that you're only a uh, maybe he really is saying that you're a shamer sacher. That makes sure the answer is so. The Gemara is saying that Rab Yosef will say everybody holds that you're chayiv ganei beda. So the Gemara says, well, if you say if you say ganei beda is the machlokas, he says your parts are so I can understand. That's why Bikiva says well you stamish on the fichim of the chayiv yirasin. You might think you're a shamer sacher, but you're only a shamer chinam. But if he says you're also a shamer sacher, he agrees that everybody. So what's he pointing? You shouldn't use it. If you're not, okay, so you're Shama Sakhar, you're Chayvan Gnei Veda, you're Potter on, on Onsen. That's why he says you shouldn't use it. So if you shouldn't use it, I'll know that you're Potter. Why does he say Lepichach? The answer is Mishim Lepichach to Reb Tarfin. Oh, because Reb Tarfin had said Lepichach, a line before in the Mishnah, Tarfin said you're allowed to use it, therefore, if it's lost, you're Chayv Bachri Asan, Kamash Malan, that Reb Kiva says, is, he also says Lepichach, only because it's Agava. Since Reb Tarfin said Lepichach, Reb Kiva also says Lepichach. So what do I need Lepichach to Reb Tarfin Lamali? What does he have to say? Lefich? Well, just say you could use it, and I'll know you're responsible. Hachi kamer. Even Shalor Rabban Shemush Big Abaya. Since the Rabban allowed you to use it, like you say, you would think normally you can't use it. Like Avram says, you can't use it without permission. I can't take your items without permission. Since over here you did a mitzvah, and the rabbis allowed you to use it, command the shtamish It's as if you used it already. That's what we're saying here. You're automatically a showel. Even if I let's say say okay, I converted it to money. I'm putting the money with the rabbi or in a safe. I don't want to touch it. No, you're automatically a showel. Because the rabbis allowed you to use it. So it's like, you know, um, it's like a guy says, um, can I borrow $100? I borrowed $100. The next day, can you give me back hours? Well, I didn't use it, but it was it's lost. It's stolen, you know? <laughs> the fact that you didn't use it doesn't mean anything. Can you rent a car and say, I don't want to pay for it because I didn't use it, you know? Once you rented it, you rented it. Once you're entitled to it, you're, you're entitled to use it. It's if you're there for your show. I wait a minute. You're saying over here, you're responsible for onsen lefichach, sheshem lefichach imav du chayiv achriyasan, right? And Rabbi Kiva says lefichach imav du ein chayiv achriyasan. But you're saying everybody holds your chayiv on a veida. So he says v'ha. So Gemara says v'ha. The last few is on the page v'ha abdu tani. It says you lost it. It says abdu. Rabbi Kiva says if it's lost, you're not chayiv achriyasan. Now you want to say that Rabbi Yosef says even a shomer sacher before you converted it to cash, you're a shomer sacher. You're responsible for ganei veda. So how can you say you're not responsible for ganei veda? And Rabbi Tarfit says, since you're allowed to use it, you're high for Aveda. Of course, you're high for Aveda. You're even responsible for Onsen. The answer is, you don't mean literally Aveda here. Could Rabbi, like Rabbi explained elsewhere, Delma Rabbi, Nignavu, sometimes when it says it's burgle, it doesn't mean like a burglary of Geneva, but list with armed robbers, which means that's an Ones. That's not sloth. Lost or stolen means I was partially negligent. I should have been more careful and was lost or stolen. But armed robbers is an accident. I, I couldn't stop that. Of the when he says lost means it, 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 his, uh, the ship sunk. So it doesn't mean lost in the sense normally I lost the item, it was in my pocket, I lost it, I don't know where I put it. No, it means over here it's an accident. That's what it means over here. So it means it's Riyadra's re- responsibility. I'm Rabbi Yomashmur. How look at Tarfa? Looks like a That Taka, you're allowed to use the money that you converted. You converted the lost item, lost animal into money. You're allowed to use it and therefore you're responsible. Now a story. Bay, it's the words Bay Rachba in the house of Rachba. And Rachva had um, was uh, like the guardian, taking care of some money for some orphans. Orphans means underage kids who are orphans, and uh, he was guarding their money. Also, came Rabbi Yosef came for Rabbi Yosef. Amalei, Malsh, can I use the money? Amalshim, can I use the money? Right, I'm, I'm guarding it for them. Can I use it? Amalei, Achim, Rabbi Yosef, Shmuel, Alchem, Rabbi Yosef, Shmuel, Tarfin. That if you converted something you're responsible for, like a lost item into cash, you're allowed to use the money as long as you're responsible. Amalei, Abaya. So Abayah said, what do you mean? This is what we say, Allah like Rav Tarfin, Rav Chelbo, Senor Rav Chelbo, Rav Huna, Lo Shalabit, the Mayaveda, that's only with money that was converted, the lost item, you converted into cash. So since you did a good job, you saw this lost item, lost animal, you took it into your house, into your barn, you fed it, you took care of it. At a certain point in time, you realize that it's going to cause a loss to the owner 
if you spend more money than the animal produces. So you converted it to cash. You're a good man. So the rabbis allowed you to do that. The, the value of the money converted it into cash. All the talk was since you went to the trouble of taking care of it, the rabbis allowed you to use it just like an avamos aveda. But the money, money that was found, if you found money in the street, like I said before, you found money in a wallet. You have to return it because there's a simon on it. Or if it was in a pile of three coins, remember, in a tower, that's also a simon. Yeah, you have to return it. You can't use that money. The low tarp, well, you didn't, you didn't uh, trouble yourself. You just picked it up and held it for the guy. Then low, you can't use it. The honey most, honey most of it, you know, when you're guarding the money of, of uh, Yusobim, this isn't like you found a lost item and converted, you took care of it and then converted it to money. This is the money like you found in the street. You're guarding them. Um, so, so um, uh, he told him, what happened? He came before Rabbi, Rabbi Yosef. So Rabbi Yosef said, "Yeah, you're allowed to." Just like he said that you're you're allowed to use the money of uh, that that you converted a lost item into. You can use this money too. But uh, Rabbi Abaya pointed out, Rabbi Chavel said, "Though that's only the Mayaveda if you converted a lost item into cash. But if the item, if the lost item itself was cash, you can't." Amalei, you're right. Zil, go. He told us, uh, go away. They don't allow me to be matter to you. I can't talk to be matter. You're going to matter the case. Lost him. Yeah. Let's say you find something, you convert it into money. Right. Okay, let's say it's $100. Right. And then you invest it and you know, it's $110. What are you returning? You're returning the lost item. It's just like we said, Irving asked that yesterday. If I borrow $100 from you and I invest it and I make $10, that's not rebit. That's money I used. I owe you $100. It's none of your business what I did with the $100. I owe you $100, right? I owe you $100, period. That's it. I owe you $100. And uh, it's the same thing. It's like a, like a, it's like a loan. I, I borrowed $100 from you. Or I took $100 from you. I have to return $100. What I did with the money, I might have spent it on a dinner. I might have given it to a friend. doesn't make any difference. I owe you that money, period. Says the mission. Mutzah's farm. Let's say you found that we before we talked about livestock in the last mission. This mission is let's say you find books. Now, books doesn't mean books like our books, it means scrolls, scrolls. You found scrolls. So what you should do is yom. You should read it through it. We will see many if you can read. If you can't read, roll it through it. The, the uh, scroll that you best say for Torah, if you don't use it for years, it could uh, get moldy, it falls apart. So you should roll it once in 30 days. Read once in 30 days. And yet, let's say you can't read, so go on. It says, read it once in 30 days. If you can't read it, so at least roll it. But you shouldn't learn from it the first time you're you're learning in something because the first time you, you learn something, it takes a long time. You spend a lot of time on that page and you may ruin the scroll. And don't read it with two people. Two people read it. One guy's pulling in one direction. One guy's pulling in the other direction. They can they can ruin the scroll. Pardon? And upside down. upside down, and upside yeah. down, and sideways, depending on where you sat. Yeah. Matzak sus. Let's say you found a garment or clothing or cloth. Menarach, you should also shake it out once every thirty days. That's good for it. Again, it shouldn't turn bad. Veshot chalitzarcha, and you could spread it. Let's say you have to spread it out on the roof or some place if it needs it. If the item needs it, it shouldn't uh, turn bad. Avalolach voto, but not for your honor. You shouldn't take it, display it and say, okay, look at this item. You know, you should take care of the item. Let's say you're talk talking about metal items, you should use them, again, what they're needed for their own need. Don't ruin them. And don't, don't um, uh, you know, do bad things to them. We'll see what, like Kesef, you, shown, you shouldn't use like silver items with hot water or the host is the other way around. Like we'll talk about like off. Let's say you find gold gold uh, vessels or clays or, or uh, uh, glass. Like, don't touch those things because clays off should not be used in cooking and things like that anyway. And glassware can break easily. Don't touch them. Actually, just leave. Let's say you find a sack or a basket, something that a older person or a rabbi, even if it was his own, wouldn't pick it up. If it was my, my own basket in the street, I wouldn't pick it up because it's not proper for me to pick up, let's say, a garbage can or something of that sort or a basket. He wouldn't take it even for himself. He doesn't have to. Even though there's a posse that says you have to return an item, as we'll see, the Gemara says, you shouldn't see an item. Sometimes you should leave it. Sometimes you don't have to pick it up in cases like it. Because we saw that in yesterday's Gemara where it says, Hashav to Shivain, return it in the proper way. The end of yesterday's Gemara. 
See how to return it. In other words, <laughs> return it to him in the best way you can. Don't cause him an extra loss. From that possible shape to shame. Return it the return it the best way you can. Do this guy a favor. He lost the item, the animal. Return it the best way you can. If you're going to just spend more mind item on more money than the animal's going to earn. Yeah, you're responsible for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you were Makaim the mitzvah. You were Makaim the mitzvah. Well, yes, for well, for if you're a shomer sachar. And it depends on if if, if, if well, you're only a shomer, if you're only a shom, if let's say you're a shomachinam or a shom sacher, point to where trade We say even possible like a tarfan, you could use that. Presumably you're a shom sacher. So if you can show that you're not responsible for that, you know you did the best you could and whatever it deteriorated, whatever it could be, you know normal wear and tear. It's like anything else. You could go debate that. You're only responsible if something was lost. If it was lost or stolen, you're responsible for it. But if it just deteriorated a little bit, so go figure no, what it was worth. The doctor didn't do anything. No, no, no. You're a shomer sucker anyway. You're not a show elf. No, no, you're no, a show. Shomer sucker. Why? Because oh, so it's a potter man. I just left it there. No, no, no. So if you left it there, you. No, no, we, we have... All right. So you're a shomer sucker. So you're only responsible as a shomer sucker. So presumably you could argue and you wouldn't pay. You, you should. You, you know. It, uh, you know. You'll say wear and tear. Normal wear and tear. You let the animal starve, then you presumably that's negligence. That's your machina. That you're so you're, you, if you if you let the animal starve to death, you locked it up and starved, then you're responsible. You're even a shamachina is responsible for negligence. Amr Shmuel. How much of them? Let's say you find a pair of tefillin in the marketplace. What do you do? Shum demand, you assess their value and you sell them, and you get the money. Manichan, a manichan, la alter, right away. Sell them off right away and hold the money for till you find the till you find the person who lost it. If you find scrolls, he said you got to read it once in 30 days. It may need so you don't know how to read it. Go learn, uh, right? You you roll you 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 roll them. Go learn ain. Sham the main It doesn't say that you should sell them. So why do you fill You should sell them right away. I'm gonna buy it. Fill in bay bar chavu meshka. Fill in you could always find. Bay bar he was a sofer over there. You could always find. So it's very easy to, to replace fill in. He says fill in. You know, even though you think people like their own fill in, but says fill in easy to replaceable rather than deal with them. Put it into money, hold on to the money. If it's harder to find scrolls, presumably they were more expensive and you couldn't find people who write, who wrote them or whatever, but uh, therefore you should take care of the scroll. In other words, the best thing for tefillin is sell them off and then you'll give the money back to the guy who'll be able to buy them. Presumably, if you can buy tefillin today, it's easy to buy them then. Apparently it was much more common. That was the best thing to do. Let's say you borrow, not, not you didn't find, you borrow a safer Torah from somebody. You, I shouldn't, you shouldn't lend it to somebody else. Isn't that obvious? If I borrow something from you, what gives me the right to give something? Isn't that obvious? More or less and when you borrow it, you should read it. And that's, you should take care of it. You should open it. But don't learn from it for the first time, as we said. Don't spend a lot of time on one parsha because you'll come to ruin that piece of the scroll. And don't have somebody else read with you because he might pull it in different directions. One is alone. Now, when I loan, I'm allowed to use it. And I should use it, right? Shouldn't give it to somebody else. Shouldn't lend it out to somebody else. That's pretty obvious. We'll see. But, but if I mouth get a safer Torah, I deposit it with somebody. Can you hold the safer Torah for me? I'm going away for fees. Hold it for me. That means don't, don't, don't use it. Just, just um, I'm, you, I'm depositing with you. Still, go low, shame as a Let's say I deposit it with you. You should still roll it once every 12 months because even though you're not supposed to use it, but you got to take care of it. Taking care of it means roll it. Then it says you can open it and read it. Now, why, why would you read it? The Gemara says, you know, you're, he only deposited with you. You're not supposed to use it. So we'll see. In Paschal but if you opened it for yourself, you open it for yourself. You want to use it, then it's also simple summer. It depends. How often are you supposed to roll it when somebody guests gave it to you as a deposit or as a loan? If it's a new one, every 30 days, because new ones apparently are not uh, takes. You know, they can they can tarnish or or get moldy quicker. The Yashin, if it's an old one where the scroll is strong, Shnei Chodesh once every twelve months. Rabbi Lazar Yaakov or Echazev Echazesh Shnei Chodesh, both of them twelve months. So the Gemara is going to ask, well, that's what the Tanakama said, Shnei Chodesh. Isn't Rabbi Lazar Yaakov saying the same thing as the Tanakama? We'll see. Now we're going to analyze that whole price. Amar Rav, Hashol Sefer Torah Mechaber. If you borrow a Sefer Torah from someone else, you shouldn't lend it to somebody else. My receipt, why talk about a Sefer Torah? I feel karma. If I borrow your shovel, I also shouldn't. Lend it to somebody else. I have no idea why I talk about a safe Torah. Anything is like that. 
I feel called an enemy. Dumb Rishon like can't show the Rebbe. Rebbe like ain't a shalva shoy lahashil. He like Rashi brings down the whole more where he talks about it. A person on Meshiv and Acher, like if, if I if I was uh, giving if I was a, a shliach to, to to take a get to give it to a woman, I can appoint another shliach to do that. However, if, if the guy told me, uh, by the way, when you give her the get, take back my silver menorah, uh, then I can't appoint somebody else to give the silver to her because maybe I only trusted the guy trusted me to hold the silver menorah, not somebody else. So the point is that you see this whole idea that a shoel, a person who borrows something, can't lend it to somebody else. They a or the hasker. And you can't sublet, <laughs> even if it's not in the lease. You know well, that's a big issue. Of many times, can I sublet? I'm leaving. Can I sublet my apartment that I'm renting? So the so so is not allowed to mask him. So what's the chiddush in that? Of course, you can't lend somebody else a sefer Torah that you borrow. No, sefer Torah is chay. The chiddush is sefer Torah. Ma'ud is I think nechle inish davet the tavim mitzvah mimada. I may think a person is very happy. Oh, please say, use my say, lend out my sefer Torah because people will read from it and learn from it and read in, in the shul. They'll do a mitzvah with my people are happy to use. Uh, people are happy when their when their items are used to perform a mitzvah. So I might think a sefer Torah, even though normally. If I borrow your shovel, I can't lend it to somebody else. But if I borrow your safe Torah, I should be allowed to lend it to other people too. Kamash Mwan, no. You know, Kamash Mwan, that you don't because people are makbid. Post of a karabo. So he says, again, if I borrow it, I'm allowed to open it and read it. Pshit, that's obvious. The hell of my shot. Why did I borrow it? What did I borrow it? To keep it in the uh, Aaron Kodesh? I borrowed it to read. To the uh, 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 It's a safe. Right, there's no Kiddush in that safe. That's a Kiddush. Yes, you're allowed to read it, but. You can't read learn from the first for the first time from that Sefer Torah because when you learn for the first time, you spend a lot of time on that urea on that portion, and you might tear it. Then Bryson went on. If somebody deposits the Sefer Torah, Reuben gives the Sefer Torah to Shimon to hold for him. So Shimon Golo Shem he should roll it once every twelve months. That's part of caring for it. Post of a carbon, he could open it and read it. What do you mean, my to take away? What is he doing reading it? He's not supposed to read it. I gave it to you I, as a deposit to hold on to me. I didn't ask you to use it. You didn't borrow it from me. I deposited it with you. You're supposed to guard it. Okay, you roll it once in 12 months. What do you mean reading it? This is Basu, If he opened it for himself, then it's Osir. You just said you're allowed to open it and read it. Golo. When he has to roll it once in 12 months to take care of the Sefer Torah as part of his uh, guarding it, an obligation to guard it. Then Posko Bakarobo, when when he's rolling it, Posko, he opens it and he reads it, that's mutter. While he's rolling it, he can read. In Mishvila Pasuk, but if he opened it to read for himself, not to go, not to take care of the safe Torah, he says, oh, I want to use it now. No, that's also. Sumka Summer, Sumka says it depends. The business about rolling it, uh, the Tanakhama said 12, at once every 12 months, maybe the depositor had gone for a long period of time. So Sumka says if it's a new one, every 30 days you should roll. The Yosh and an old one, Shnei Mishachodosh, uh, every 12 months. Rabbi Yaakov says both of them, it's 12 months. So Rabbi Yaakov is saying the same, Rabbi Yaakov saying that Tanakama also said 12 months for everything, doesn't make him see new ones and old ones. Both of them 30 days, and Rabbi Yaakov would then be the author of our Mishnah. What did the Mishnah say? So that would be Rabbi Yaakov's Shita. We have some that says it depends if it's new or old. And we have the Tanakhama of this price is saying no, once every twelve months. So there's different opinions as to how often you should you should roll the Sefer Torah. You shouldn't read it, whatever it is, whether you borrowed it uh, or whether you uh, whether you borrowed or whether it was deposited with you. You shouldn't read it <clears throat> for the first time, meaning you shouldn't learn from it and and spend a lot of time on one section and nobody else read it for a minute. It says where you shouldn't read it with another person. You shouldn't read it and review it because you're spending too much time on one section. Look at a parsha we talk also you shouldn't read a parsha and explain it because again you're holding you're spending probably too much time on one section. You shouldn't open more than three dapin at one time. Also that could ruin it could roll away or can cause damage. Three people should not read from one scroll. So when three people you shouldn't hush nine cards mash with two people could Oh, so the Pashim Shad is, if it's in one Indian, in the same section, two people shouldn't read, right? Only one person. If it's two different Indian, one person's reading in this section, one person's reading over there, then two people could read, but not three, but not three. That's how Rashi learns. But on the side, the girl brings down, the Ramam says the Hepach, the other way around. 
that if it's in one area, they're all in one area. But if it's if it's in two areas and two people are allowed to read through the fingers, maybe they'll also pull it or whatever. So it depends how you learn the Gemara. But again, be careful with it. All right. So then the Mishnah said, most says if you find a cloth or a garment or something, hour, you should shake it out once every 30 days again so that it shouldn't get uh, moldy or whatever, uh, moth-ridden, whatever happens to garments. The Mamer Dini or Mali are telling me that shaking it out is good. But Rabbi Yochan, Rabbi Yochan says, he says it sort of sarcastically. If you happen to have an expert tailor, a weaver, uh, an expert weaver in your house, you should shake your garment out every day and have him make you a new one, you know, or fix that one. As if to say that it's not good to shake out clothing. I mean, if you do it every day, that's not good. That's good. It's good to do it once in 30 days. It's like probably dry cleaning. If you sent your suit to be dry cleaned every day, it probably would last that long. You boys say, what you say, look, I have a hot of a tray. Okay, it depends what. If you shake it out, one person shaking out is okay, but if two people shake it out, they might pull and tear it. All right. If you do it by hand, that's one. But if you do it with a stick, that's injurious. So in all these cases, the second way is a bad way. Was it wool or was it linen? So again, the Pashup shot Rashi learns is that if it was, uh, Rashi says that wool is bad. Wooling is bad, and, 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 and if it's linen, that's, that's good. But again, the grow brings down that from Ramat's Mashma, Ram Mashma, the Hepach, because that also goes in sync with these answers. We said the answers is it's okay. With one guy, it's okay. Two guys is no good. So the, always the first answer is good. The second answer is not. With the hand, it's okay. By the stick, it's no good. Then you say, but Amra is okay, but a Kisna is not good. It's Mashma, the linen, maybe with cheaper or whatever it was. And with wool, it's okay. With, with, um, with linen, it's not good. But Rashi learned the other way around. Amra Biochan. Now, Rabbi Yochan was the author who said, he sort of said this like um, uh, sarcastically, but it was also good derech heretz. You know, uh, be careful with your clothing. Unless you have an expert weaver in your house, don't shake out your clothing every single day. So Rabbi Yochan said other things, more brings on other things that he said, good advice for living. I'm Rabbi Yochan. Uh, it's better to drink a cup of witchcraft than a cup of lukewarm water. Okay, we're not done yet. So don't, don't jump, we'll see. Below arm and elbow, that's only if it's in a metal cup. That's not Karshan, that's Karis, but if it's an earthenware cup, it's not a problem. In a metal one, apparently it's not good. Even when a metal one, we say it's no good. It's only if it hasn't been boiled. The tzav is less than both, right? But if it was been boiled, then it's okay. So even if it's only lukewarm now, that's okay. He's only saying really that under certain circumstances, you're better off drinking witchcraft, meaning he doesn't really mean literally drink it, just saying that it's not good to drink lukewarm water that has not been boiled and is sitting in a metal pot. That's only if you haven't put some spices in there. If you put some spices in there, then there's no problem. I'm going to go from another advice that he gave. Man, father left over this you find many times where the father worked hard and saved his money and earned a lot of money. And then the spoiled kids who never had to work a day in their life, they knew how to ruin it and lose it. lost everything, right? It's happened once or twice in history, right? So Misha Nikola was well, sorry, but father left over a lot of money, brought some, and you want to lose the money? In other words, obviously he's going sarcastically, right? You don't want to lose the money, but the way to lose your father's money, I'll tell you how. You should use... Uh, you wear linen clothing, which was apparently expensive and not as good as the clothing we have today. Uh, it wasn't Dockers or, you know, Levi's. It was whatever, uh, like, you know, linen, linen clothing. The Yishamash Lukuch said, you should use a lot of glassware. Use glassware, you know, spend your money, have glassware. The Yisker permission, and that's another good one. Hire workers and don't stay there with them. You ever, you know, hire workers and, and leave? Oh, he'll take care of it. Right, right. Yilvish, right. Well, actually, come on. You, so now he explains. You must be pitched on. What do we mean by linen or flax clothes? The kiss and race of Roman, Roman linen, very expensive. With white glass, very expensive. Use, we're talking about use, you know, spend your money on expensive things. Hire workers and don't stay there with them. Taguma, the with oxen, they're going to cause a big loss. Rashi learns if you have oxen who are used in the field, you know, for plowing, etc. And you don't stay there with them, right? The, the workers don't really care much. You hire Arabs or whatever. They're gonna, they'll, they'll step on the grapes. They'll, they'll step on the carom. They'll ruin everything. It's a big a loss, right? Because they don't care about the loss, and the animals will trip. You know, you got to be very careful. The animals will, will fall and break their legs, and 
that if you don't send them in the right place, etc., and they'll uh, you know they'll they'll mess things up. Tosa says it's gears is there's a tavri, which is more not the oxen, but we're talking literally about the uh, the plowing. In other words, he says if you hire them for plowing and they're not you're not careful, if you don't stick the plow deep into the ground, the uh, the seed won't take and it won't grow well. Either way, we mean you know hire workers and uh, and um, you know and and leave them. Don't don't guard them. Don't stand with them. You know I'll come back tomorrow. You guys stay here. You know you know what happens, right? You, you run the shop for me. So that's the way to lose your money. All right, we'll pick them here tomorrow from the top of Daf Daf Have a good day, everybody. Call to.